Hey everybody, welcome to Chris Terry Lessons, and uh, it is hot in New York today. It's like 110, um, but I even remembered to turn the air conditioning off in this lesson. And today we are going to talk about um, right hand muting technique. Um, and I don't mean the writing right hand muting technique like we talked about in the alternation exercise, but this is actually a sort of a kind of almost a different style. Um, it's something that a lot of bass players use and something I developed early on um, to get kind of a different sound. Now, let me just demonstrate sort of what it is first. And uh, let's turn the amp on here. Still early in the morning. Uh, let's get a sound happening. Sounds good. Maybe we can turn it up a little bit. Hey, what do you think? Sure. One of the reasons I'm turning it up is because we are going to be doing this muted technique. And sometimes I find if I have a little bit more volume, it, it helps, helps out with this. So let me just demonstrate it for a second, and, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, let's see, what groove was I using? I'm sure that works. Okay, uh, let's do the key of A, all right? So you'll see on this other camera, you'll see what my right hand is doing, okay? that. Let me just stop this. So you'll see what I'm doing is I'm deadening the notes. Instead of playing, um, what I'm doing is playing and having the notes be really dead, okay? And this can be really, really useful when you want to have like the intensity, but you don't want to have like the volume or the attack that normally is associated with, with, um, with playing just normal finger style, okay? So this is a whole other playing style onto its own, and I find I switch between stuff. Sometimes I walk like this. Sometimes if I'm like at a gig and it's like a super fast tempo swing-wise, like we're playing giant steps or some sort of thing, um, instead of like going to the normal playing a solo or whatever, sometimes I'll like really mimic an old style uh, upright bass, you know, and, 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 the, and the solo will be something like... You know what I mean? Like when they used to do that in the, in the, in the 30s and stuff and just play like these sort of walking bass solos, which can be really kind of neat. Um, anyways, that's a little bit off the track. But so let's talk about how we, how, we, how we get this, okay? Oh, I wanted to mention too that in the old days, this style kind of, a lot of guys got so into this sound that they actually put foam um, sort of between their strings, old foam, so that it deadened the strings, so they just got the boom, that sort of sound. So that's another way you can do this. This is a way that you don't have to put foam in your strings and you can sort of get the same idea. So how do I do it? I take my hand and I give myself the karate chop, okay? Just like this. And I lay it on like this, kind of just above where the bridge happens. I think my, this part of my wrist, let me see that in the other camera, this part of my wrist kind of goes right across the, the E string um, bridge uh, section. So it goes like right there. That angle, that, that little spot in your, in your, in your wrist is right on the eight, right on the E uh, bridge saddle, okay? And then the rest of it just sort of fans out diagonally away from it like that, okay? So hopefully you can see that. If I roll my hand, that doesn't feel very good, but I'll roll like that, okay? And then I just sort of like stick my thumb out and I've got this and I'm pulling into the string below, okay? So now all of a sudden, okay, so it moves from this part of my thing to also being kind of this part over the E over the E um, saddle as well, okay? So depending on how much muting I want to get. So I can get a lot, or if I go lighter, start lifting my wrist off like this, I can get less. Obviously none. This is mo most to none. So I would say practicing that first, okay? And in a way, I'm, I'm almost pulling into, I have an, uh, the other finger here ready to play, ready to play. I don't really 
use this finger. It's usually mostly just a two finger technique, okay? So I would recommend just practicing on the E string like this. How dead can you get the notes? I'm pushing really hard there. And if you can see, I'm pushing the string to the point where it's almost touching the pickup with my, with my hand. Okay, so. And of course, if you move your hand up, you're going to get even more muting, but it doesn't necessarily sound that good there. So. Try it with all strings. Okay? Now, the other finger just comes in and sort of allows me to do some 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 funky stuff, so you know, gives me some other options. Now I'm playing a, a, just an A, octave A to the flat 7. If you haven't checked out flat 7, your way to basic funk, this is a good, good uh, tie into that. A good tie into that lesson. So check it out. Okay? Sped up. A lot of times I'm getting this finger to play ghost notes. Okay? And again, it's all the pressure that I'm putting on right here, okay? Um, so when we get it with a drummer, it can sound it can sound really, really, it can sound really neat. So this is like no, obviously, this is no muting. Right? But all of a sudden, if you want to get this in. Practice just thumb. Right? No fingers, just the thumb. And then you can start adding the th finger. To Okay. So hopefully that introduces you to the style a little bit. Again, it works really great for walking. It works great in funky stuff. It works great in a pop tune. Like a lot of times, if I'm playing a pop tune, let's slow it down. You know, it gives it that nice dead sound. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with that, and it's a whole other style we can add to our playing. So we got, man, we're really racking up the styles here, okay? Uh, check it out, let me know, post some videos of yourself doing it in the forum, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll bat it back and forth, all right? Thanks, guys, see ya.